What's up everybody? It's been a minute since I did an update for the rental market in Miami-Dade. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing in this video today. So if that's you, if you're a renter, if you're a landlord, if you're somebody who'd like to become a landlord, then this is definitely the video for you. Jake Fletcher here with the Fletcher Group at eXp Realty, your Miami real estate agent, and I can't wait to share all this data with you guys. There's been some big changes in the rental market here in Miami-Dade, and we're gonna be covering all of that today. Everything from supply, demand, uh, the number of closed rental transactions, median prices, literally everything you need to know about the rental market in Miami-Dade right now. So without any further ado, let's jump on into the data because we love data. And uh, <laughs> looking at the number of closed rentals, I know it says sales there, uh, but they are rentals. They're closed rental transactions. Um, we can see that the rental market is strong, okay? That's that green line there. Uh, you know, since the beginning of 2022, it's been climbing and climbing. And, um, you know, we've seen that upward trend, you know, going on now for a while, right? Like I said, since January, 2022. And now the big line downward from March, 2021 to January, 20. Uh, that's like right here to right there. Um, you know, that was during a time when prices were skyrocketing the fastest. So I think less people were actually moving in that time because of the perception of potentially having to pay much higher rent than what they currently were uh, anywhere that they might go, right? Because the perception was like rent is up everywhere. So, you know, potentially sales declined during this time because there was that very strong perception of like, wherever I go, I'm gonna be paying more than I am now. So as far as the data goes, July, 2023, three saw 3,238 closed rental transactions. That's 112 less than the month before, which is a 3.3% decrease. However, it's 416 more than last July, which is over Schmiel, <clears throat> and that is a 14.7% decrease. Increase in transactions. So overall, you could definitely say the rental market is stronger transaction wise than the purchase and sale market right now, uh, which is not a surprise when you consider basically how high interest rates are. Uh, it makes renting a much more attractive option to a lot of people. So the blue line here is uh, the closed price to original price ratio. Um, and also, too, I should mention on that last note that as we're gonna see in this video, there's way more inventory for rentals as well compared to the purchase and sale market where there's basically no inventory. So that definitely has a factor in uh, both markets for sure. Um, you know, as a renter, you have tons of options of where to go because there's so much inventory. As a purchase, uh, you know, somebody purchasing real estate, you have very few options. So, uh, but we're gonna talk about that more in this video. The next line is that blue on there, the closed price to original price ratio, uh, which is an average percentage difference between what rentals are listed for versus what they actually end up renting for. And as we saw in March 2021 through September 22nd, that's going to be right here to right uh, September 22nd, what, uh, to September 2022 through right here. Uh, this measure right here, basically, sorry, I'm pointing at the green line, the blue line there, as we see between this line here, that measure was literally off the charts, okay? So this is when most people were having to pay more than what was being asked for by a landlord in order to actually secure a rental property. I know for a fact during that time, at least anecdotally from my experience, I saw rentals that were listed at 2,500 renting for 3,000 or 3,000 renting for 3,500 and so on and so forth, right? Um, so this July, we actually, uh, we did see this metric at 97.2% down here. So big, big difference there. Uh, and it's mostly been on a downward trend since January of this year, right? We kind of started the year closer to that 98% and it's kind of worked its way, you know, down minus the, the March 2023 low right here. But overall, the, the trend has been downward, meaning that the difference between what a landlord is asking for a rental versus what it actually rents at, the, the gap is getting bigger, meaning they're renting for, for less a lot of times than, uh, than what the landlord is asking for. Okay, so boom, let's look at the next graph which is this one right here. Hope you guys like my falsetto. <laughs> now looking at inventory, uh, we can see again, uh, polar opposite conditions than what's happening right now at this exact moment in the purchase and sale market. So both 
active number of listings, aka supply, and new listings are both rising at a substantial clip, as you can see right here. Now, this is super interesting, uh, not only because rental supply is above pre-pandemic, looking at this green line here, uh, levels, but because the supply is raising faster than new listings, which is the blue line there, right? So there's there's a greater increase or rate of increase of the overall supply than there is of new listings, okay? So what does that mean? This could be for a few reasons. So one could be because more properties are being turned into rentals that weren't previously rentals before, or hadn't been on the market for a long time. More people might be con uh, condensing households because they can't afford rent on their own, AKA moving in with family, friends, or roommates, things like that, uh, thus creating additional supply. Uh, and there are definitely some properties that I have seen and I know of for a fact that were originally intended as short-term rentals that weren't performing as expected and have to be basically turned into long-term rentals to you know make the numbers work to supply income for the landlord versus you know the intermittent short-term rental revenue which also requires a great deal more management basically a lot of people bid off more than they realize they could chew <laughs> with short-term rentals and the numbers ain't looking so good so they're like all right let's turn this into a long-term rental and lastly properties are sitting on the market for significantly longer than in the past few years because there are a lot of landlords who are either asking too much because they thought prices were just going to keep going up forever uh, and you know maybe they're not paying attention to the actual market value of their unit or you know it's very possible that they could just be stubborn and they don't want to accept a lower price than what they imagine that their unit is worth okay so either way they're losing money <laughs> you know the people who are in that scenario uh, which you know for renters means that there are deals to be gotten okay so actual supply hit 11,882 units in July that's that green line right there that looks like it's you know going to the moon um, and that's 445 more units than in June for a 3.9 percent increase year over year however we see an absolute breakout in supply from last July over Schmal, uh, when there was 6,964 units. Uh, and so we've seen since then an increase of, get ready for this, 4,918 more units for sale for a 70.6% increase of active rental supply in just one year, okay? So, uh, you know, as for new rental listings, uh, looking at the blue line now, that number actually declined slightly from June to July from 5,789 to 5,539, a difference of 250 units or 4.3% month over month. However, again, new listings are up significantly just like active listings, although not quite as much, about half uh, as much. Uh, year over year from last July, we had 4,099 uh, uh, new listings, which is a 35.1% increase of 1,440 additional new units, okay, um, from this July compared to last July. So pretty big news for the rental sector and definitely could have some very significant effects on prices moving forward uh, because when supply drastically increases, if demand doesn't increase in line with the, the rate of increase of supply, then usually you see prices adjust downwards. However, there's a big you know asterisk on all this. Rental prices are notoriously sticky as we are about to see, okay? So, Boom, ba -da boom, ba -da ba -ba 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 boom, ba -da ba -ba -ba boom, ba -da ba boom, boom. Made my graphs too small. Oh well. Um, <laughs> so as promised, here we go with the price action. Um, this is, you know, what the majority of people care the most about. That's why I sneak it in, you know, to later on in the video, so you got to watch, you know. <laughs> if you do find this video helpful. I would actually love it if you liked and subscribe, uh, you know, to the channel below. Uh, it definitely helps me a lot to help more awesome people like yourself. So, uh, median rental price. Again, it says sale price, okay, down here, but it is rental prices. That's just how the MLS is. It's like a 1990s DOS program at the municipal library, okay? But the data is accurate, so we press onward with accurate data, uh, <laughs> and we do our best. So prices actually showed a $100 decline 
Raka -daga. That's the green line there. From June to July, from $3,200 to $3,100. So renters, rejoice, okay? Now, interestingly, that's the same decline that we have year over year compared to last July when we were also at a median rental price of $3,200. So you can definitely see how prices have more or less moved sideways since the summer of 2021. Uh, you know, if you look at it like, uh, you know, summer of 2021, eh, kind of like end of the summer of 2021, right here would have been like September, well, August, September right here. And then it's basically just kind of gone sideways. Um, you know, uh, the median rental price has bounced around it during that time between about $3,000 to $3,200 a month, okay? But with so much extra supply in the market now, perhaps this June to July decline is a signal of more rental declines in the future, but we gotta wait to see how that plays out. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on that on this channel for 100% sure, subscribe below. Uh, <laughs> so I definitely, uh, you know, my personal opinion, I don't expect to see some type of rental crash, you know, uh, <laughs> even though I might have a thumbnail that says the word crash in it every once in a while. Gotta get people to click, okay? I'm giving you guys all the secrets on today's video. Um, however, I do definitely see renters having way more power in the price department than they've had in the last few years, honestly, um, because that insane increase in supply that we're seeing right now, it, it eventually has to play out, right? There has to be some give and take. We're seeing less closed rental transactions. We're seeing way more inventory. Therefore, we can kind of deduce that, hey, maybe the demand is, is uh, softened compared to the relative supply. So hopefully we'll see prices, uh, you know, at least come down. Maybe we could get that median rental price back down to 3,000 or 2,900. I think that would be great uh, for all the people renting out there, trying to save money so that they can, uh, you know, reach out to me when they're ready to buy. All right, now, <laughs> days on market is our blue line there, and they've sort of been meandering upwards since July of 2021 over Schmiall, okay? And uh, that was when uh, we had actually days on market were at 40, so 40 days on market. Um, days on market is how long a property is on the market until it sells, okay? So this past July, days on market came in at 60, okay? Which is of course 20 additional days, 50% increase, you guys can do the math. However, last month in June, it was at 73 days on market, okay? So things picked up a little bit for the end of the summer. Um, and again, you know, we'll be keeping a close eye on what happens with that and everything else moving forward in that department, okay? So, um, you know, as supply continues to go up, like I was saying, if we're going to see prices substantially go downward or even notably descend, then we'll definitely expect to see days on market increase substantially, uh, you know, as properties sit longer and longer. But, you know, as of now, demand seems to be pretty strong, um, but there's signs that maybe it won't be strong forever. Um, you know, if we got back into this sort of like 80 plus days on market for, for you know, extended period of time, while at the same time having insane levels of inventory, eh, that could be a recipe for, for rental prices to decline a bit as, you know, it's, it's much more, you know, financially savvy for a landlord to go ahead and rent out the property at 2,900 versus, you know, 3,100, uh, you know, if, if it's going to get it rented right away versus sitting on the market for months and months while they continually are having to, you know, incur holding costs on the property. Now, last but certainly not least, I don't know why that was like my Transylvania accent for you guys there. <laughs> Anyways, so we're looking at months of inventory next months of inventory is how long it would take to rent out the existing uh, supply of rentals if no new inventory came on the market, okay? So if it stopped today, it was like no more rentals, how long would it take to rent the existing supply? So pretty predictably, we see months of inventory increase as inventory has also increased at a greater clip than closed transactions. And right now we're up at four months of inventory right here, up from three months of inventory in June. Last July, for context, we were at two months of inventory, and the July before that was one month of inventory, uh, but in reality, it was probably more like five seconds of inventory, but the graph doesn't go that low, okay? So, you know, what does this mean for renters? Like I was saying, you know, the signs that, that uh, you know, months of inventory have risen, uh, you know, days on market are a lot higher than they've been in the last, you know, couple years. Um, yeah, a couple years, uh, you know, Transact closed rental transactions, you know, also also taking a hit. Um, you know, as far as like 
when we were at the peak of craziness of the pandemic, you know, they're up compared to like last year, but you know, they haven't caught up with supply, right? So, you know, taking all these things into consideration, I do think, like I said, that renters have more power in their hands than probably a lot of you realize. Um, you know, it's, it's a simple, you know, economics 101 supply and demand if there's a substantially greater supply and the demand has not kept up with that supply what usually happens to prices well you got to get competitive in that kind of market if you're the one offering the product aka the rentals um so let me know what you guys think drop comments down below if there's any other markets or any other you know sectors of the miami market that you would like me to cover any video requests let me know i'm like a dj but for youtube uh <laughs> and real estate specifically and um you know i appreciate you guys watching if you have any questions you can drop a comment you can also reach out to me in my contact information down below if you'd like to work with me or if you just would like some advice i'm here to be a resource to you guys to educate the public and uh, ultimately to you know help lead you towards your goals in real estate so you know jake fletcher here with the fletcher group at exp Realty. It's been a pleasure. Thank you guys for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.